Friday the 26th of May. So there's a big piece um, in the Manchester Evening News on mental health and the failure of the system. And I've read some of the stories and it, it's absolutely terrifying. You know, it's terrifying. But on a couple of those stories, I didn't appreciate the, well, I'm part of the LGBT community or whatever. That means fuck all. No one's going to feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for the fact that you've got mental health issues and you've got mental health problems, you know, because we're all struggling and we're all fighting. But the reality of the mental health system in the UK is absolutely broken. So the first thing that will happen is if you're lucky to get to be assessed is your doctor will do an initial assessment. They're not mental health trained. GPs are not mental health trained, all right? It's a, it is without question a specialist area. And a lot of mental health nurses don't have a fucking clue in the nicest way. So you get your assessment, you're then referred to having an online where you fill in the form and then you wait for the call and they will ring you. And then this is an on over the phone assessment, which like I had, it was nearly an hour in summer. And then they go, oh yeah, you've got A, B or C and the waiting list is nine months, 10 months, 11 months, 12 months. In the meantime, if you have a problem, then ring these numbers. Well, if you don't have the money to call those numbers, you know, and in the process of that, your doctor will automatically want to put you on some form of psych medication, which is really disturbing because the reality of that is you don't want to do it. I'm going to tell you you don't want to do it because I've been through the process and it just heightened everything that I was going through. Then I go, oh, give it three or four weeks. Did that. Didn't work. Um... It didn't work at all, it was absolutely horrendous, didn't they give me another form of medication? That didn't work. I just stopped because it was absolutely messing my body up, messing my mental health up even more. It was horrendous. It was not something I will ever want to experience again. And obviously, seeing that big piece today in the Manchester Evening News before I hit the gym, after being in the doctors this morning again, um, it kind of hit the nail on the head. You know, one of the stories there was explaining how the lady was forcibly restrained and she had not resisted. And she'd been strapped down to the bed only for someone else to come and assess her. She goes, why, why, have, we, why have we been strapped down to a bed? Why have we been forcibly restrained when I never resisted? Does that not come under the Human Rights Act? Forced medication, forcing medication on someone, forcibly injecting somebody. Where this lady's story was to the point it's now damaged her liver where it has less than 54% workability. Why are these people not been arrested? Why have they not been charged with physical assault? Why are they not in prison? Because that is not a mental health service. That is not a place where you go for you to get better. It's just no. It's just not, not conducive to anybody's well-being, health. It's just not conducive. It's not correct. It's not right. And in one of the stories, the individual is using the, the LGBT card, which is no. You are what you are, that's the end of it. I don't give a fuck, no one else gives a fuck. Your sexuality is your own. Don't force it on me, don't force it on other people. We're not gonna feel sorry for you because of your sexuality or whatever it is you wanna be, him, her, hit, tree, car, bus. It's not, if you've got mental health, fair dues, but don't bring something else into it which is fucking irrelevant. That's your choice, you chose to do whatever it is you wanna be or be whatever you want to be. That's your choice. And if you don't like that, when other people turn around and go, well, no, we don't appreciate what you are. Because you're trying to force it on us and we don't accept that. 
That's your problem. You created that. It's really sad, but at the same time, no. So mental health in general within the United Kingdom is an absolute nightmare. It is very difficult. So I'm now on some mystical waiting list. You know, so if I don't keep doing what I'm doing, I'm actually micro-dosing, like I've said in the previous video, I am actually micro-dosing with a CBD with THC to help me. And I use the word micro-dosing. I can't do, like I said in the previous video, the recommended dose, because my body's really sensitive. But at the same time for myself, I am now isolating myself away from people. And because I need to fix me. And I won't allow anybody to interfere with that process or try and push that process or try and pressure that process. No. No one has the right to do that. Uh, I don't appreciate that. And some people think this is a conducive way. It's not because where I'm concerned, me personally, if someone tries to push something or force me, I'm going to punch you in the fucking head. That's going to be the start of it. All right. That's the start of it. And that's the gospel truth. All right. I won't tolerate it. It's a slow process. As we all know, those of us that are actually really suffering from mental health, we all know it's a fucking slow process. And it's very hard on occasion to talk about what is going on in your mind. Like my videos, my videos are very useful for myself. I would go back over them and have a look. And it tells me how my mental health is actually fluctuating. How am I doing? How am I going? You know, and it's very important for me that I do these. Um, I recommend anybody else out there, you know, do your mental health videos. Talk about your mental health online. It's all right. You're going to get those um, absolute knobheads who um, like to hide behind the screen in the mum's basement. <laughs> Them, which is fine. But you'll never meet them face to face because they're, as usual, absolute cowards. That's all they are. You know, nothing but cowardish, dirty people. And the reality is if you do meet them people, you tend to destroy them. Because I guarantee if I come across anyone like that, that have been abusive to me, I'll just wipe the floor with them because that is what they need. Because they're the dirtiest type of animal. They're very, very low. They're very filthy. It's unacceptable, you know. Um, as we know, for mental health, communication is really important as well. And like I said in previous videos, uh, I'm looking to so many different areas now because I have to, because the system is fucked. So I am trying to figure a way to fix myself without harming other people, without affecting other people. And then having to get up every single day, go to a job, that is an extremely negative environment on most days. Keep a smile on, be understanding for other people, trying to help other people, you know, being patient with the staff. <laughs> it's really difficult when part of the just wants to go, look, like you just, just kindly fuck off because I'm dealing with so much shit in my own mind, your shit. I don't fucking need it. I don't need it, but we can't do that. You know, it's, um, I've been fighting this now. Five years, it's, it's crept up five years and it escalated. It's kind of really blew up in the past couple of years, like heavily so. And this year it just volcanoed. And the sad thing for me is those people that are around me and those people that are really close to me, don't understand. They just don't understand. Or they don't want to understand. Or they want you to be the same because they have a form of control over you when you're like that. That's what it feels like to me. And I'm like, nobody controls me anymore. Not even in my job. If I don't want to do something, I'm not doing it. You know, I hate that attitude of we told you so or you were to no. You make a, a reasonable choice or sensible choice at that time that is beneficial and if, it, if later on it is wrong it's wrong that's like that's the way it is but we never should and never should be persecuted for that 
So yeah, unfortunately, the mental health system as it stands is absolutely diabolically destroyed. Uh, a lot of the people in the mental health system have no fucking experience at all. And that's really worrying. It, uh, the thing that worries me is you may go to university to become a mental health nurse, but reading reading books and doing theory will never, ever, ever prepare you for the reality. Ever. I think it's very important that there should be a form of on-the-job training from day one. And this should be across the board from community, base mental health to hospital, base mental health, through to understanding what the counselor's job is, understanding what the psychologist's job is, understanding what the psychotherapist's job is, understanding that medication sometimes just does not work. It kind of like locks you in a box because you're easier to control and therefore you're not a problem. There needs to be some form of correct training where future generations of mental health nurses, mental health professionals have experience or even life experience. People my age should be looking at going into it because we have the life experience and we're understanding more. I think having somebody who's just come from uh, college to university to the ward to whatever, they don't have any life experience. They have an academic experience, but that's it. Academia will not save you in the situation of dealing with someone who's got mental health. I deal with people with mental health every single day of the week, especially in the city centre, especially where I am in Manchester, around the Piccadilly Gardens area. If you ever see me up there, please, please, please come and say hello, okay? Never be afraid to approach me. I have a stern look when I'm on the job. I'm all right. Come and have a chat with me. Be my pleasure to speak to you. doesn't matter who you are. Okay, if you see me, come and say hello and we'll communicate. Because communication is extremely important. So it's a bit of a waffle. I hope this is making self, uh, making some form of sense. The mental health system is absolutely broken. We need, like I've just said, people with life experience to be able to be trained, to be able to go into the community, into the hospitals into the psychology departments, uh, psychotherapy departments and the counsellors and stuff like that. It's really important. I think doing those types of jobs from an early age is a bit, not that I'm against it. It's a bit frustrating because they're just reading off a card. Right, if he's got that symptom, so it, A leads to C, that could be B. Uh, D could be E, or maybe that's an F or a G. Don't know. I'm not sure there because they're not adding up. So we're gonna have to, and then we'll give them those meds. But no, that will uh, that will agree with X. So we'll stop those meds and we'll give them this meds that might go with A. And they're fucking your life up, right? They're experimenting with each one of us individually because they can't figure it out. Mental health is not by being doped up. Mental health is not by being forcibly restrained for no reason, which is a breach of the Human Rights Act in that type of environment. Being forcibly strapped to a bed is a breach of the Human Rights Act when you have done nothing wrong, okay? There's legalities there and there's laws there. Mental health isn't about that. Mental health is trying to help that person have some form of normality, have some form of life and being able to get out and being able to interact and being able to become part of the community and in their own way, become productive. It's not about throwing you in the fucking room, you know, dosing you up, having the wrong type of people doing stuff. It's not about that. And a lot of mental health nurses and the mental health professionals, the way they speak to you is very condescending. It's insulting. All right, okay. How do you feel now? Because now, 
you brought yourself out and now you're angry with them. So that's now a defensive thing for them to think, oh, please don't hurt me. No, I will speak to you like you're a normal human being. I will speak to you like this. We'll have a conversation, right? I'm not going to treat you like you're a fucking child or speak to you like a child or, oh, oh, don't do that. Don't ever do that. If you're a mental health professional, do not ever do that with a patient. Ever. It's condescending. It's insulting. And you're just going to lose out. I could waffle all day on this subject because obviously um, I'm now deeply into researching it and trying to understand it so I can fix myself. Um, I talk about my mental health, but I don't talk about my mental health. I'm very good at avoiding it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If I'm asked about it, I'll change the subject because... what's happened to me and, and the process of that and where it's led me in life and, and the things I've done because of that. I am, I'm dealing with all of that. I'm dealing with all that. And that's all because of the early stages of that catalyst where I was uh, abused as a kid. Do you know what I mean? And that's led on and led on and led on and like I said previously in other videos, it is like trying to put a jigsaw together with nothing on it. It's very strange. You know, I've got years where they're just blank. And I get snippets every now and then. And I have to look at photographs and stuff like that to go, oh shit, yeah, I was there, I did do that because it's blank. And in those time periods where I was doing what I was doing, there was a lot of violence. So my mind's just going, well, fuck you, mate, because you, you've grown up in violence. You've been in an house where it's extremely abusive. You've been abused in a violent household where you're surrounded by violence as a natural form for anything, where you grew up in a, in a place where your family's interlinked with Manchester gangland and stuff like that, old school guys, and it's normal to be an absolute cunt, which is not, it's not normal, right? <sighs> the fight is real. The fight is real for all of us who are suffering from mental health. The fight is real. And ironically, I think people that suffer from mental health make really good counsellors, because we do. We're there for other people, right? Which is quite ironic. I, I do a lot of counselling stuff for other people because I understand their shit that they're going through. I might even look at doing a few more courses related to that, even though I am going to go off and be a paramedic. Uh, I might look at doing a few more courses related to mental health. I don't think there's enough mental health practitioners for children, for teens. You know, the, the sooner we can relate to and understand and catch the problems that are happening within the children that have been damaged or hurt or been in environments where it's just mentally affected them, therefore their programming is disrupted and therefore the vibration goes out into society and they're committing dry, uh, crimes and they're doing stupid stuff across the board, right? The programming for that, to reprogram those babies, those children in a safe way doesn't take a couple of months, doesn't take a year. It can take two to three years just to get them, giving them confidence, building them up within themselves, making them understand that they have a, a gift, a talent. You know, education may have failed them because of the way they were. Let's get them back into education. Let's get them, you know, on the path to being something that they want to be, to achieve something. I could go on all day about this. Not going to, because it could be a 10 hour video. Stay safe.